Today, we are talking about this. What's going on guys? So I filmed that intro about four months ago and a lot has changed since then. I have a dedicated YouTube space. I actually moved out and got an office. I've done more client work in the last four months than I've done in the last two years combined. And I'll definitely make a video on that and tell you about it. But today I want to break down one of those projects that I did and I want to show you everything from the idealization phase all the way until execution. And if you're interested in any particular part of this process, I've timestamped everything down below so you can go chapter by chapter or you can stick along with me through the entire video. So what we're looking at today is a 30 second car dealership ad I did for a local dealership here. They wanted it to be a little spicy and they gave me full creative control. So I had so much fun. So let's start off with the concept. The client approached me and said they wanted a 30 second ad for their Dodge Charger. They wanted to appeal to younger male customers and they kind of had an idea of how they wanted it to feel. They wanted it to be a little bit more gritty, a little bit more upbeat. Originally, it was just like a pure nightlife club scene, but then we kind of altered it to kind of be focused around the car itself, the sound of the car, just how like awesome and sporty the car is. So with that in mind, what I did was I went to Millanote not sponsored. <laughs> I threw a bunch of images on the board. I kind of got an idea of what the shot compositions would look like, kind of how I would want the feel to be. Maybe I threw a dash of color in there, you know, just reference things to keep in mind for the day of shooting. I'm not sponsored by Melano, but it is a fantastic app if you want to storyboard and idealize. But as far as initial concepts, I knew I wanted to appeal to a young male audience. I knew I wanted it to be eye catching. It's a local TV spot, so I wanted to make it stand out on local TV. That way when it pops up, they're like, wow, that, that sound is iconic. Or you know how you see some commercials and you just can't get it out of your head? That's what I wanted for this. Now we had to get into the planning of the actual shoot. I knew how I wanted the shoot to feel. So now how can I film something that fits this feel? What gear should I use? What song should I use? I like to pick the song on the very front end. So for this particular shoot, I knew exactly which song I wanted to use. I wanted something that I could license for TV. So something that didn't break the bank, something that had this catchy feel to it. And it ended up being this track. That metronome tick that happens every few seconds is like great because it lives in your head rent free. And I knew for a local TV spot, once it's popped on TV, no matter where you're at in your house, you're gonna be like, oh, that's the Charger ad. So after finding a song on Audio Jungle that wouldn't annihilate my budget, I thought about it, reflected on it, imagined it with the sound of engines revving, imagined it with the sound of like the street cars passing the traffic, and does it mesh? And yes, it did. After finding the song, I needed to know, how could I actually execute <laughs> a shoot like this? Because I don't have a ton of experience when it comes to filming cars, uh, little to none. So I had to do a little bit of research. And what I came across was I knew I wanted to use my Sony and I wanted to figure out a way to use the Ronin RS2 gimbal that I had with my Sony. But I needed to use the Sony's autofocus and I needed to be hanging out of a car and it just doesn't work that well. So I found the Tilta Hydra Alien car mount from Tilta. This was a quote unquote cheaper solution. It's about $1,200. It does exactly what it says it does. It mounts your camera outside of your car using your gimbal. And it actually has a few quirks that we got a chance to figure out and work around because the initial setup was really jittery, but a few alterations took out that jitter and it actually made it very, very usable. And it let us get some insane shots. What I was able to do was mount my camera to my car, strap it down to the back of my car, create a wireless 
monitoring and control system kind of from scratch using a HDMI transmitter, the Ronin RS2 app, and a battery powered monitor. I was able to just kind of throw those things together, sit in my passenger seat, and control the composition of my shots. The Sony itself would do most of the focusing. So I really, really, really needed to rely on that good autofocus. And yes, you can set this kind of rig up with something that is manual focus, but Conveniently, I did have the autofocus available, so I was definitely going to use it. If you would like a deep dive into this car mount system, like where I just pretty much give you everything and explain everything, exactly how I altered it, and everything that I've done to this rig to make it work, let me know. Just shoot me a comment down below and I will get on creating that video as well. So I knew how I was gonna shoot it. I knew I wanted my Sony FX3 with my Sigma F1.2 lens. That way I can create this awesome separation of background if I need to. And the compression just works because it's 50 millimeter. 35 millimeter would have been a little bit too wide for the type of shoot we were shooting, but it still looked great. But personal choice led me to 50. Now that I had all of that in place, it was time to get to the filming. Filming actually surprisingly went pretty smooth. My camera didn't fall off my car, <laughs> which was my deepest fear. And everything just kind of worked. We had two separate film days because of the type of shoot that we were doing. I knew that we needed multiple locations just to kind of fit the variety that the fast paced ticking music track kind of provided. And so what we did was I knew we wanted that sunset feel. The car is orange. We wanted it to just be sunset vibes, nighttime vibes. The car is a standout V8 and it just kind of worked together. So we split the shoot into two days. One day we would do a variety of locations as well as detail shots. We would go from almost sunset to pitch black, and then we would come back another day and get just the driving shots at almost sunset and pitch black as reflected in the footage. And plus working around sunset, you don't have that much time. So we really had to keep things tight and it just kind of worked. Most of the locations that we chose was in the downtown area of my city. It gives us the most variety. It gives us the most flexibility. It's not a huge downtown area, but the feel of it could be like any city. And that's what we wanted. We didn't want it to feel exceptionally too local. We wanted it to be able to go wherever it could. And personally, I wanted it as a portfolio piece that I could show to anybody else. And they'd be like, wow, this could, this could work in my city or this could work wherever we are. And that's what I needed going into this project. And I'm kind of glad that we achieved that. And it looks so good. At the end of the film days, reflected on the footage, love the variety, love that it kept everything fresh. We chose so many different locations. What we did was we always had the music track ready and prevalent just to make sure that the shots we were capturing fits the vibe of the overall video. And it did. So on to editing. Okay, so editing this thing was honestly quite a breeze. I have it pulled up here on my laptop and because of the nature of the type of film that it was, it was very straightforward. I knew I wanted something that was low on the effects side of things. So nothing that would be over the viewers heads because this is going on a local television spot and not before like a YouTube ad or somebody who's searching for this car. I wanted it to be eye catching not too visually distracting, but it did need to be fast paced. And the editing worked out really smoothly because you just match cut to the song. And the type of cutting that I did left it to where it was on beat, but every other beat occasionally. So you just kind of had to get a feel for the song itself. But as far as the editing goes, everything is very straightforward here. And if you want to, we can see the actual cuts here and we can play this and get a feel for how the cuts reflect on the timeline. What I've done here is the actual sound effects did not transfer in, so I'll punch those in in post. And that is what the actual timeline looks like. It was very fun to make and I, it took me a couple hours to kind of get the pacing down just for the music. But once I had that, it was more about how we're going to arrange the shots, I should say. So 
what we've done here is when the music transitions and it gets a bit more upbeat we've gone from our stationary location shots into the driving section what i've done here is i filmed with a black pro miss 1 8 to give it this little bit of bloom when the reflections hit and i use that reflection shot love the shot it was iconic when i caught it i use that shot as the transition piece so that when we go from sitting to moving the reflection kind of hits and it kind of helps transition you into soft slower movement and then as it progresses the car speeds up and speeds up and you hear more and more engine noises and things get a little bit more chaotic all before ramping to a stop because it's a 30 second spot it has to be tight and the song thankfully work just perfectly. I'm almost certain I shortened this song and mixed it in Adobe Audition. There's a really neat trick if you want to learn about that. Uh, Peter McKinnon had a video on it and I can definitely make one if you guys want to see exactly how I do it. But tight, concise video, exactly 30 seconds worked out. Color was so much fun to do with this video because of the dynamic nature of some of the shots, some of the headlights. I love the bloom. I love the reflection that popped off of these things. So when it came down to color, I use about three different things. I use the LUTs from Potato Jet for his black magic camera LUTs. I use those as some of the foundations, some of the greens and stuff like that. I actually remade all of the colors, but when I saw how easy it was to just kind of slap the LUT, I was like, oh, he already has the exact feel of what I want. So it's like that matrix kind of feel where there's greens and blues. I mainly use Film Convert as well. I have it linked down in the description below. Film Convert helps add that grain, that texture, and that feel to it. And alongside of that, I actually played around with some spice that I'm going to be releasing in a later video to help kind of, you know, awaken my color workflow. Talk about that later. But if you want to see a side by side of how it looks raw footage versus how it looks with color, here's a side by side 30 second viewing of that. So effects, none <laughs> outside of just the in card, having, you know, the logos and the website for the client, there is no special effects. There is no transitions outside of anything that is practical. Um, as I said, this was a part of a much bigger project where we were creating like a lot of these, this one, I love how practical it is. So there is no special effects and yeah, sometimes you can just make it work without going a little too over the top. One of the best things that I did was the actual sound design. Sound design was originally going to be practical as well, but it is exceptionally hard to capture. <laughs> just listen. Yeah, there is no capturing the revving of the engines. There's so much wind. And what I did was I decided to just fix it in post. <laughs> I found a bunch of V8 Hellcat sound effects. I found a bunch of like, you know, engines revving, uh, the motor humming, things like that. And I kind of paste them throughout the actual video. So if you want to hear what the sound design sounds like, it sounds like this. <laughs> throw all of those things together, you get this.
So yeah, I'm exceptionally happy with how this thing turned out. I have so many car commercials that I've done recently. So if you want to see more behind the scenes of things like this, I would love to showcase them with you. I've also done a bunch of story videos and I want to show you exactly what goes into creating a story video from start to finish, as well as creating some of my commercial work that is coming up soon. But for right now, this thing is done. I've sent it off to the client and it should be airing on TV very soon. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm going to be bringing you videos just like this every week. What do I say? Oh, man, it's been so long since I've done an outro. I don't even remember what to say. Um, all in all, you guys stay safe. You're loved. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Hey, I can feel, I can feel, I can feel, I can feel when I